This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. That's right. It is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. This, and I'm here. <laughs> yeah, this time. Uh, yeah, because we got to fix the intro, right? But you gotta, we got to fix the intro. I've also got uh, a new board that I'm having to mess with the audio on. So if things go a little crazy sometimes, don't judge us. We're still Full learning. Full disclosure, like every other show, it's not going to go smoothly. <laughs> We've only been doing this for four years. Exactly. Um, so yeah, this is the Pac-12 South College Football Previews and Predictions show. We got a lot to discuss. Yeah. I just got back from San Francisco from my sabbatical out to the, uh, out to the left coast and... I think that puts me in the right spirit to be able to talk about the Pac-12. Were, were people excited about college football? Nobody in, in San Francisco seemed to really care. I did see a lot of gear, so I visited Stanford's campus. Um, there were a lot of people in San Francisco with Cal gear on, and of course Stanford gear around Palo Alto and in South and Santa Cruz, etc. Uh, saw some USC shirts. Kind of, kind of weird. I would I would think that you would see like Oregon gear and stuff like that too. Didn't see. It seems like a place where all the other teams fans would, would, would all be in go the middle of. It's like going to Atlanta around here, right? Yeah, I mean that's like, true. That's like I, college football central. I was in, in Atlanta SEC. on Sunday. Yep. Uh, well, Saturday and Sunday, and yeah, down there it was a lot of Georgia. Saw yeah. LSU fans, Tennessee fans, Alabama fans, one Mississippi State fan. Um, Surely, oh, several fans. several Auburn fans. I mean, yeah. that's that's like. That's the closest campus Atlanta is. You yeah. think of Georgia, but really, but really, it's, it's a lot it's closer Auburn. to Auburn. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was a good time. It was yeah. it was a lot of fun, a lot of good stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into this. Uh, the show brought to you by BetNow.eu. Use promo code Winning fifty for a fifty percent deposit bonus. That's W I N N I N G five zero. Look, great online sports book, great layout. They treat us well. They will treat you well. They make Gambling, simple, and that's all you can ask for. Uh, it's great for recreational gamblers. Go check it out for yourself. Betnow.eu, promo code WINNING50, and they will give you a 50% deposit bonus. The Pac-12 South. I am so ready for college football. It is driving me insane. Yeah, I'm ready for football, period. I think yeah. we're recording this, I don't know, middle of July, end of July? July 23rd? 23rd. And, yeah, the end of July. And uh, I think officially last Sunday was the last Sunday without football until February. Is that right? I think, like, spring well, this, training preseason. This Sunday is... Not preseason, but you get... Somebody said that on one of the NFL Network shows. Spring training doesn't start... I mean, spring training starts, obviously. But you wouldn't get... We wouldn't get games yet, like preseason games. That wouldn't happen until August. No, it, I think, I think this Sunday there, there's not a game. The first game is the Hall of Fame game, right? Which is and like then, that first weekend in August. That's right. And then after that, maybe that's next weekend. I think maybe it's next weekend. This coming weekend is the last Sunday. Yeah, I think this which coming is, weekend anyway, is the last. We're, we're we're beating a dead horse. Football season's here. Yes, we're in the Memphis area. I, I I hate the summers because it's just ungodly hot, and today it feels like like a Kind of a nice August day. Yeah, it really is. I mean, the the weather gods are smiling on us. What was it? The high today was 80, I think. Yeah. And, I mean, it feels awesome. Right now, I wish we could be doing this outside. uh, You believe that. We don't have a lot of nice days around here to be outside. Now, you you got that right. All right. right. Where are we starting? We are starting with the Arizona Wildcats. Okay. Five and seven last year, four and five in conference. They return eight starters on offense, six on defense, Experience in the conference, number five, nationally number 55. Head coach Kevin Sumlin, 86-43 and 43 at Houston and Texas A&M. He lost the first two last year, BYU and at Houston, en route to a 5-7 and seven season. Had he got one of those, they would have gone to a bowl game. Right. Quarterback Khalil Tate, uh, only he, he was averaging 128 rushing yards per game in 2017. And... Only 20 yards per game in 2018. Now, he was hurt a little bit, etc. His completion percentage dropped, actually. When he when he started doing more backup or uh, uh, 
drop back passing. I was about to say, yeah, in the pocket. Went from 62% down to 56%. So I'm, I don't know what we're going to get this year with Khalil Tate. Uh, running back J.J. Taylor's back. He had over 1,400 yards rushing in 2018. Defense improved in 18, but was still number 92 total defense in the country, number 121 passing, number 98 scoring. Like, they've got to shore up that side of the ball. Uh, the biggest defensive line Arizona's had in a while is, is this year. Uh, the front seven looks better than they have. Uh, their toughest games are on the road other than Washington. So, you know, a bowl game, I think, is it, at, at least a bowl game is okay. the mark, right? Oh, I think that's definitely their their goal. Yeah. I think that's what we're shooting for if you're an Arizona guy. The over-under is six and a half. Over is minus 130. Under is plus 110. Ooh. Okay. I would have them under the six and a half looking at this schedule. I would too. Uh, I, I would too. Now, I've got them at six and six. Here's here's where I'm going through. So, okay. with, with the schedule, at Hawaii, I've got to win. Northern Arizona, I've got to win. But then I've got them losing at home to Texas Tech. I've got a win over UCLA, a win over Colorado. So that starts them out 4-1. and one. Looks good. That's right. But then listen to the way that this thing ends. Washington, loss. At USC, loss, I think, right? Because I don't know exactly what USC is. but Yeah, we're, we're guessing on some of these. Yeah, loss at USC, loss at Stanford, a win over Oregon State. Then you've got a bye. Then you play uh, at Oregon. I've got that as a loss. A loss to Utah. And then I've got them with a win over Arizona State to get to six wins. Okay. So four and five in conference, six and six. I've, I've got a little bit of that jumbled up difference, but I've got, I've got them five and seven, and I've got them losing the Arizona State game. That's, and you would think, because they've got so much experience coming back, that they'd be a little bit better, but I don't know if I can trust Kevin Sumlin right, right now. Right now, in that specific game, late July, I'm making this decision. I'm looking at what I know about these teams and what I know about these coaches, I'm going to go with Herm. I'm, I'm just going to go with Herm. Yeah. I don't think one of these teams is substantially better than the other. I think it is a rivalry game. And, and if I need a coach to get my team up to end the season on a high note and beat your rival, I'm going with Herm. Arizona State at home, like, that's that's going to be rough. That's right. Now, Arizona did catch them last year. That's right. Um, but I think Arizona – has better players. Arizona State lost a ton. So, Correct. You know what? Let's go ahead and get into that. Let's get to Arizona. Arizona, Arizona State. State. The Sun Devils. 7-6 and six last year. Pretty impressive. Got to a bowl game at 7-5 and five and then uh, got, got beat up by Fresno State, but they they treated it exactly the way it should be treated. It was an exhibition, right? Correct. 5-4 um, and four in conference. They returned 7 starters on offense, 6 on defense. Experience... Number seven in the conference. Number 82 nationally, so not good. Not great. Head coach Herm Edwards started one and four in one possession games. They went three and one in one possession games down the stretch, which is bonkers. Yep. Like, they had nine one possession games last year. Um, uh, guess what? I, I think if I had to pick, a lot of these are going to be close to. Oh, yeah, I'd imagine so. I mean, that I, That's a little bit of Herm's style, though. I don't know that he's such a great coach and they're such a great team. They're going to blow a lot of people out. But I think he teaches kids fundamentals well enough and gets them excited to play big enough to where it's hard to blow them out, too. Hey, you might be right. You might be right. Um, experienced offensive line, all seniors. Yep. Uh, star running back Eno Benjamin had over 1,600 yards rushing last night or last uh, year. They, they, they he's all going to have another big year. Oh, yeah. I would With that line, so. I think he's going to have a big, big year. The problem is that everybody will be focusing on him because they had Manny Wilkins at quarterback last year, you know, senior quarterback, et cetera. This year, it's either freshman Jaden Daniels or junior Dylan Sterling Cole. Uh, wide receiver Nikhil Harry is gone, but they do have a lot of experience returning at wide receiver. Defense should be better with a more experienced front, but they lose dominant nose tackle uh, Rennell Wren. Um, the schedule sets up to match last season's win total, um, but a lot of this depends on quarterback play, et cetera. And I think, you know, going from that stud quarterback, which a lot of people didn't think of Manny Wilkins as that, but he was 
a just a very consistent, reliable That's right. quarterback. He, he had experience. He didn't make big mistakes, which hurt teams. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I don't like the schedule. I don't either. Um, I love Herm, but I, I think this is the drop-off year. I think next year he gets them back, you know, in the 7, 8, 9 wins okay. range. This I was going to say, how far do you have them dropping? I've got them at five and seven. Okay, I've got them six and six. I got them dropping the game, but that's the difference. Is we've that's got the, the Arizona Arizona State game swap flip. Yep. So I've I've got a win over Kent State, win over Sacramento State, loss at Michigan State, a win over Colorado, a loss at Cal, win over Washington State, uh, a loss at Utah, loss at UCLA, loss to USC, um, a win at Oregon State, and then a loss to Oregon, loss to Arizona. And that's how we get to five and seven. I've got them three and six in conference. Basically, like I said, now now I we have quite a bit of difference in wins and losses of which games, but we differ on right now and today picking the Arizona Arizona yeah. State rivalry. And that's, that's does that game have a name? I don't think so. It's not like I'm the sure Civil War, like Oregon. I'm sure it does. It's, we just don't know it. We just yeah, we're we're SEC still elitist. Learning. I understand. Yep, we're still learning. That's the way it goes. Let's move on. Colorado Buffaloes, five and seven last year. Mike McIntyre got fired. They went two and seven in conference. Uh, started out nicely, five and zero, oh, and then lost every game down the stretch. Uh, got, what do you think the chances are they start out five and zero oh this year? Probably not good. Yeah, okay. not it really. Actually, really not <laughs> zero, good. Zero. Uh, probably yeah, zero percent chance. I Zero's think. close. Yeah. I, uh, although I mean, it's. Maybe all right. Maybe not zero percent, but I just I don't see it. Uh, experience number eighty-eight in the country, number eight in the conference. They got six guys uh, back on offense. Six, I mean, uh, five starters back on defense. New head coach Mel Tucker went from the NFL to Alabama to Georgia. Now the question is, how is he going to do with less talent in Boulder? Now he'll tell you that there's not less talent. Well, yeah, he has to, but he would be a liar. That's his job. Yeah. So, quarterback Steven Montez returns. That's definitely a good thing, along with wide receiver LaVisca Chenault, who, when healthy, may be the most explosive player in the country. I mean, he's unbelievable, um, but he missed a ton of games last year. So, three out of five offensive linemen returning. They need a rushing attack, uh, either Alex Fontenot or Deion Smith. Uh, linebacker Nate Lamon and defensive end Mustafa Johnson. They're going to be leaders on the defense. They need to improve their passing defense. Uh, they were number 74 in the country last year. Gave up over 234 yards a game. Um, having a senior quarterback is big, but this schedule is atrocious. I mean, it is really, really rough. It's um, tough. I, I've got them at three. and I, Oh, the over-under for them, by the way. Arizona State's over-under seven. Over is minus 125, under plus 105. Uh, Colorado's is three and a half. Over is even money at plus 100. Under is minus 120. Whew. So Vegas thinks that they are going to go under. Um, so I, I've, I've got them. I've got them two and 10, and I have a question mark, maybe three and nine. I've got them three and nine. I've got them one and eight in conference. I've got a win over Arizona for them. Oh, okay. So if the other wins, I've got a win over Air Force, a win over Colorado State. Uh, losing to Nebraska, losing to uh, at Arizona State, and then, man, they lose uh, at Oregon, at Washington State, USC, at UCLA, Stanford, Washington, at Utah. Yep. That is brutal. I mean, it, it, even with a senior quarterback, that is I have I have rough. no idea. So I have Colorado, I have Air Force with a question mark, and then I have nothing else, but I think they're going to win a conference game. Yeah, I think, I just I think don't that Arizona game. Any, I just don't know anywhere where it's going to happen. So Arizona comes off of a bye week. Um, At home, off a of bye, usually probably a pretty good bet to, yeah. to catch somebody. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think could that's, see that. I think that's how that works. So uh, three and nine in Mel Tucker's first year. I think this is kind of a year zero thing. Everybody oh, yeah. understands. I, nobody's going to judge him for how he does this year unless he does really well. Yeah. And then they're going to judge him in a good light. But. And and maybe in a not fair light. But That's we'll right. See. That's right. All right. Next, UCLA Bruins. Chip Kelly. Okay. 
UCLA went three and nine last year, three and six in the conference. Uh, they started out O oh, and forever. I think they went three and three down the stretch, so that that worked out okay. Uh, returning starters, they got eight on offense, nine on defense. Experience number thirty-eight in the country, number three in the conference. This is year two of the Chip Kelly experience. Uh, it starts off tough, but uh, they've got a lot of experience back. I do think that they will get better. Quarterback Dorian Thompson Robinson returns along with interim, uh, or sorry, their entire interior offensive line. Running back Josh Kelly. They got to replace uh, tight end Caleb Wilson, who was at at points the best tight end in the country. That's right. Um, number one hundred and four scoring defense. Number one hundred rushing defense. Number one hundred two total defense. The defensive line has to get better, and they have the size to do that this year, much more so than they did last year. Uh, they are led by defensive tackle Antonio Maffi. Uh, non-conference difficult. Conference road games could be a problem. I still like this team to go six and six. The over under is six on this. Wow. Okay. So it, they, over under is either one is minus one ten. So I think Vegas thinks it's going to land right on the dot, and I think I agree with. Them. I I have them six and six as well, and and I've got one coin flip game in there that they could lose. To, to move it. And that's the USC game. I've got them losing at USC. I've got them losing that game as well, but it's not really a road game because it's in the same stadium. Yeah. And it's just... I got them winning it, but I've got the question mark there to where if, they, if they're not going to make a bowl, that's going to be where it's going to be. Yeah. USC, that's going to be USC Super Bowl. That's going to be their... We have everything to play for today. We've never been in this situation where USC were better than this, and we got to win this game. Yeah, I think you're probably right because I, I'm going to tell you, uh, before we hop into USC, I got them losing a lot early. So I do too. Um, you want to go ahead and just throw your record out there before we even break them down real fast, just so we you can. Know what? No, well, let's, well, because there's context here. Well, let's let's just go on and jump into. It. Okay, let's go. Let's go. USC Trojans. Now they got a tough schedule early, also. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Five and seven last year. Four and five in conference. If five, you told me they started out six and zero, oh, I would or zero oh and six. I, I would not be shocked at all. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, five returning offensive starters. Four back on defense. Number seventy six in the country in experience. Number six in the conference. Uh, the over under for them is seven. Over is minus one forty. Under is plus one twenty. Head coach Clay Helton, he won a Rose Bowl. He won a Pac-12 title in his first two years. But they did have their first losing season since 2000. That's not a good thing at USC. Uh, People typically get fired for that. That's right. So this is kind of a make-or-break year. Sophomore quarterback JT Daniels returns. His performance against Notre Dame, look, he was 26 out of 31 at the half. Uh, That provoked Helton to hire new offensive coordinator Graham Helton. Now, obviously... They had Cliff Kingsbury. They start working on what they're going to build this offense into. Kingsbury gets, I won't say poached, but hired by Hell an no. NFL team. He was he was there less than a month. Yeah, he was in. Like uh, you, he was, you haven't started working on anything. Oh, I in seriously thirty days. Doubt that. In thirty days of your first hire, yes, a hundred percent. I think a lot of it's recruiting. You're still learning where the can is. Um, you might be right. So, but yeah, they they bring in Graham Harrell from North Texas. Uh, they got to fix their offensive line. They only returned two out of five starters. They were really bad yep. last year. Allowed twenty seven sacks. They ranked number one hundred and eight in rushing offense. That is not a normal USC thing. Nope. Number one hundred and twenty in turnover margin. So it, they were minus ten. You would expect that to maybe flip a little bit. Defense needs more takeaways, but they've got to replace the entire secondary. Uh, Look, the, the over under seven, over is minus one forty. I'm hitting dead on the number. I've got them at seven and five this year. Whoa! Uh, so but, we we see this way crazy, crazy different. I think that their schedule, like because of the division that they're in, they don't have to play the majority of the really tough teams. Um, and when they do, they, I mean it's fairly easy, right? Here, I've got them winning against Fresno State and Stanford. To start out with. And then losing at BYU, Utah, at Washington, at Notre Dame. So I've got them 2-4 and four to start. 
But then a win over Arizona, a win at Colorado, a loss at home against Oregon, a win at Arizona State, win at Cal, and a win against UCLA. So you think they're just going to go on the road to two pretty well-coached teams and just, just take Ws? I think that they have got significantly more talent than both of those. Teams. I don't know that that matters, though. It, it may not. I mean, it, but this it, is for, my thing. I've that's got right. That's right. Seven so and five, we're, we're, we're six different. and three in the conference. If UCLA yeah. wins that game, that coin flip game, I got oh. them four and eight. I think in that first six games, I think they come away with one win. I don't know where it's at, but they're not going zero and six. No, no, no. You're but right. But they won't be. They won't be the better team on the field in any of those six games. And I think they would against Fresno. Man, I don't. I don't know. Because, dude, Fresno loses everybody. We already Okay, them. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, and you might be right. And I'm like just first thinking game of the, the season. Typical Fresno tough team. I don't see USC being tough. That offensive line, you they used to put NFL linemen in the league. They put running backs in the league because they bullied people up front. Yes. They haven't done that in a long time. Yeah. I, I mean, tried you, you to right. think of them without that Trojan helmet on and said, these are the dudes they're playing with. This is the coaching staff that's there. This is what I have to work with. Forget that they're USC. What do you really think? And I and I came away. Basically, I got five and seven, and here's what I came away with. I think that first six games, I think they're going to win one. I got no idea which one they're going to win. But I think all six of those teams are going to be better than them and are going to be tougher than them. Okay? Yeah. I don't think they and, win any of the, the road games. I don't think then, they win at BYU, but, at Washington, at Notre Dame. And, and then and then I got two road games where if these were home games, I'd give them to them when Arizona State and Cal. But both of those teams are substantially better coached and better prepared. Cal's coach is an incredible football coach. Yeah. I don't think he's going to be at Cal very long. I think you're probably right. Because I think people are going to come get that guy. Okay? Yeah. You're just not walking up there with better talent and beating them. He he needs to. I'll tell you this, he needs to fix his offense. But we'll talk about that in the back to North preview. Yeah, we'll get we'll get um, there. But that's fine. So what what have you got him five and seven? I got him five and seven. That's that's totally feasible. I mean, I could see that. I've got him seven and five. I don't think seven and five is enough to save Clay Helton, especially and, with and Urban Meyer hanging out. That's it's giving him that coin flip game at UCLA. Yeah. If we take that away, I got him. I got him four and eight. I mean, we'll see. And I, I just don't see that happening. And, and, and I'm that's, on the other that, side. That's ridiculous. Where I can't see USC having two back-to-back losing seasons. But see, that's because you're thinking too much about the jersey and not looking at the dudes that are there. Well, no, I mean, I, I'm looking at the, the talent. If you look at the talent, USC still has significantly more, uh, more talent than almost anybody in the conference. Yeah. Sands Oregon. But, but where... I don't know about that. Washington, I would think Washington is better talented than them as well. I mean, if you go look at the, if you actually go look at the recruiting rankings, like they are, they're right there. Let's not talk about recruits from last year because those guys aren't playing. Let's talk about recruits from three years ago. And then where are they? Do you have a bunch of receivers and no running back and no quarterback and no offensive lineman? Because then you're still winning the recruiting battle because you've got all these five-star blue chip guys that are freak athletes. But your quarterback ends up on his back half the time. Yeah, you got you can't run the ball to open up the pass. At I, that I don't. Point I, don't just... I don't know where the talent is, but I know this: their offensive line is bad. Yeah. It's it's really bad. If they don't sure that up, then it doesn't matter how much talent you have behind them. You might be right. You might be right. I've watched football long enough, though. You have to have a line. Yeah. If you want and to I, do and I anything think they, on offense. Now, they might sure that up. They yeah, might have recruited they will some guys. They might have gotten tougher. They might be better at scheming. I don't know any of those things. I know what I saw last year, and I know what's coming back. Those guys aren't good. You you might be right. You and it scared right. me. I, I just think there's some coaches out there that are that are tough in this conference. I don't think they have talent in this conference the way other conferences do, but the coaching staffs in this conference not a joke. Well, let's let's talk about one of those better coach teams, and this will wrap up the Pac-12 South. Utah. This is a legit team, all right. So their over under this year is nine and a half. Uh, the over, that's, that's big. the over on it is plus one thirty. The under is minus one fifty. So. I mean, that's a lot of juice either way, right? Like, yep. you, you get in a bunch with going over, but 
you're also giving up a lot if you go under. Um, nine and five last year, six and three. Returning starters, they got eight on offense, seven on defense. Uh, fourth most experienced team in the conference, number 54 in the country. Kyle Whittingham, 120 and 61 in 14 seasons. Uh, they may have his best team since joining the Pac-12. Offensive coordinator Andy Ludwig returns from Vanderbilt. He was there before. He's coming back. Senior quarterback Tyler Huntley, he missed five games last year with a broken collarbone. Uh, both offensive tackles and their center return uh, for the offensive line, along with skill players out the wazoo. Uh, star running back Zach Moss is back. He is unbelievable. Defense, number five against the run, and all four defensive linemen return. They had the number 14 total defense in the country, the number 16 scoring defense, and three uh, defensive backs return. They were number 53 against the pass, so they still need a little work to do on that. But when you are that good against the run, uh, everybody's going to be trying to throw, right? So it's it, the numbers kind of skew themselves. Favorable schedule, no Stanford, no Oregon, means they could easily repeat as Pac-12 champs. I'm going. Tell me what Pac-12 South champs, right? Yeah, yeah. Pac-12 South. Yeah. Okay. Not Pac-12. Champs. But they they didn't they didn't win the Pac-12. Yeah. So yeah, they, they wouldn't you. repeat. But I, I like this team. I think I think this is one of the toughest dudes in all of college football. I and I think the schedule and this roster set up. I I got a couple of I got a couple losses for them. Some of it's bias towards other people. My boy Mike Leach. We'll get to him later. All right, but I, I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna be nine. I think they're gonna be nine and three. That's where I got them. I have them eleven and one. Holy shit! And I've got them eight and one in the conference. I love this team this year. So I, what it, loss do you have them in the conference? I've got them losing at Washington. By, that one game at Washington, and and that's only that because be it. it is the week after California, and it's at Washington. Yep. Um, California beats people up. But I, I think I, Utah is better at beating people up than Cal. They're both really physical. But, yeah, they're really physical. So, like, I, Cal does not have a ton of talent. No. But they play hard. Oh, and hard. you're going to feel it the next week. And the fact that they've got at Washington the week after that, uh, I think they lose that one. But other than that. You're making my case for why I think they're better than USC this year. Oh, yeah. Because, because they do things like beat people up and play physical. And, and USC just doesn't handle that well. Yeah. Oh, you come here and you run this soft spread offense and you play a soft defense, you're maybe more of a Pac-12 school. Yeah, we can hang with that all day long. Oh, you come here and you play smash mouth football? Yeah, we don't like that. Yeah. We don't like that. So I, I, it's, so anyway, you made my case for Cal, by the way. Um, I, I'm with you. Those are, those are two of the best coaches in college football that not a lot of people know about unless you pay attention to the Pac-12 or you follow college football religiously like we do, and you like all of it. Yeah. Those two guys are legit. Yeah. People need to know their name. Well, I mean, people, I think people know Kyle Whittingham. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to bet there's a lot of big college football fans in Memphis that pay attention to SEC football and Memphis football and don't know any, anything about those guys. I mean, you might be right. You might be right. Um, all right, that's going to wrap up the Pac-12 South. Uh, I think, do we both have Utah winning the division? Yes. I think we both got Utah winning the division. All right, go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to uh, betnow.eu. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.